and a copy of the presentation will be posted on the project's webpage. We ask you to invite your friends and neighbors who might be interested in the project to watch the video and fill out a comment form or send us an email with questions or comments. Now I'm going to turn the meeting over to Mr. Bob Vosen, who is the MDT District Administrator for the Missoula District. Bob will take us through team introductions and introduce the project. Thanks, Lisa, and good evening, everyone. Uh, as Lisa said, my name is Bob Vosen. I'm the district administrator for MDT for Western Montana, the Missoula district. Um, and I want to thank everybody for taking time to join us today. Um, I'm sorry that we're not able to be doing this in person. I would much rather prefer to meet each of you individually, shake your hand and uh, uh, be able to visit face to face. But the, the challenges of COVID have caused us to utilize this uh, new technology that's available to us and in an effort to keep everyone safe and yet still be able to uh, also keep everyone involved and, and uh, make sure that we can develop relationships and start um, obtaining valuable community input as we develop this uh, exciting project. So uh, with that said, uh, I'm gonna do some really uh, quick introductions. Um, you can see on the screen now the names of the team in front of us. Uh, Jacqueline is not able to join us tonight, so I will actually be uh, covering a couple additional slides discussing project history and goals. Um, but uh, John Schmidt, our construction engineer, is with us tonight. John, care to introduce yourself, please? You bet. Good evening, everybody. As Bob said, I'm John Schmidt, the Missoula District Construction Engineer for MDT. And as part of this project, I'll be um, aiding in uh, pre-construction constructability issues and then uh, aiding uh, with contract administration during construction. Thanks, John. Um, next up is Cameron. Hello, my name is Cameron Cloberdons. I work for MDT and I work in the Consultant Design Bureau. Uh, my role on this project is to uh, coordinate the effort between the design consultants and MDT personnel. Thanks. Thanks, Cameron. Uh, Beth, you're next. Thanks, Bob. This is Beth Kappas with MDT, and I work in our alternative contracting group. Um, and I'm teamed up with Cameron to help manage this project for the department. Great. Thanks, Beth. Uh, next up is uh, Mr. Mike George. Hi, I'm Mike George with uh, Keywood Infrastructure. And on this project, we're really trying to provide as much insight on the means and methods pricing and everything we can uh, into the design uh, as opposed to waiting for the design to get completed. Great. Thanks for that, Mike. Uh, Lisa? Good evening, everyone. I'm Lisa Fisher with HDR. Um, I am the project manager for the consultant and we're leading, leading the design for the project. Great. Thanks, Lisa. And everybody has already virtually met uh, Lisa Gray with HDR, the public involvement lead for us. Um, so now moving into the, the project itself, um, on your screen you can see in the dark uh, blue along the eastern shore of Salmon Lake is the general project location running from approximately milepost 5 to milepost 9 at the north end. Um, this is on US Highway 93, which is a, a primary route for uh, the Montana Department of Transportation. Uh, one thing to note here is the design speed of 45 miles an hour. This is not the same as a speed limit and we'll get into that detail a little bit more uh, later on in the presentation. Um, so this this project is, <coughs> excuse me, sorry about that. Um, this project Oh, and I'm sorry if I misspoke. I think I might have said 93. This is Highway 83. Uh, sorry about that, everybody. Uh, the big, bold, black letters on the white there in the, in the middle of the uh, image, and I failed to read it correctly. Uh, so a little bit of the, the project history here and, and project history and purpose. Uh, originally, the the Salmon Lake Highway 83 reconstruction project was going to be one project uh, extending all the way from the Clearwater Junction at the south end to the north end of Sealy Lake. 
Um, but that, that's a, a really, uh, it was a, a massive project. And from uh, a funding standpoint, for one thing, uh, just very difficult to be able to put that size project together in, in all in one shot. So it was broken apart into four different projects, as you can see on your screen. Uh, the Sealy Lake South Safety Project was completed first. Um, and then most recently, we completed the Clearwater Junction North Project. Uh, from the junction of Clearwater to the south end of where this project will begin at the south end of the the lake. Uh, for locals, you'll recognize the one of the landmarks there now is the, the large shock retaining wall that was constructed as part of that project. And then when we're done with this project, there will be one more uh, project to complete and that's the Sealy Lake South project. So again, the project we're talking about today is the Salmon Lake uh, Highway 83 reconstruction project. <clears throat> so the, the purpose of uh, the project we're discussing today is uh, widening the roadway, trying to stabilize some of the existing cut slopes. Uh, those of you familiar with driving at this uh, roadway has a uh, a, a very long history of rocks of varying sizes to fall down and end up on the roads. Uh, we have some catchment areas, but we're hoping to uh, be able to address those and improve the safety of the overall roadway with those improvements. Also, we're looking at improving um, the roadway uh, geometrics, including curves and vertical grade. And, in layman's terms, the, the geometrics of the road is basically how, how that road lays out, what it, what it looks like. Uh, horizontal alignment would be the left and right curves as you're moving side to side or making left curves, right curves. Vertical grades and alignments would be uh, hills and valleys, dips and rises that we're going through. So trying to basically straighten and flatten the road as much as possible to increase, increase uh, the, the safety of the roadway. Also, we will be looking at uh, evaluating some potential wildlife accommodations, although very difficult in this area. And then there, there is one, uh, one major intersection with Woodworth Road coming in from the east or north, depending on how you want to consider it. Uh, do, seeing what we can do to make a realignment of that intersection and improve the safety and uh, site distance at that intersection. Also, there's a past history of some drainage issues there as well that the team will be looking to address as much as possible. So with that uh, brief history and overview, I'm going to uh, turn the project over now to uh, Beth Kappas, who's going to talk to you about the unique delivery method we're using on this project. Beth? Thanks, Bob. Um, so yeah, as Bob kind of mentioned when he was talking through some of the, the major project elements, there are a lot of features associated with this work that are pretty unique and challenging in a lot of interesting ways. So kind of given some of the, the constraints associated with this project, MDT has opted to deliver it using a new to us approach called CMGC. And CMGC stands for Construction Manager General Contractor. And that title really just kind of describes the role of the contractor on the project. But um, in this method, MDT hires a contractor at the beginning of the design phase to provide a lot of detailed construction insight to the design team. And then the idea here is that with more minds in the discussion and with all this additional constructability information, we can really develop a more robust and cost effective project plan. So through a competitive process, MDT selected Kiwit Infrastructure Company as the contractor for this project. And so as you heard when we were running through introductions, um, we have Mike from the Kiwit team on the line. And you'll certainly be hearing more and more from them as design development continues. So when we get closer to final design, Kiwit will be able to provide a lot more detailed information about what construction will ac actually look like once that gets underway. And, and really the ultimate goal here is that we're trying to limit impacts to the traveling public during construction and really provide for maximum mobility throughout the job state. And, and those considerations about traffic impacts are something that we're continually working on and talking about now during the design phase, which is a huge advantage of this method is just kind of having the contractor on board to kind of help um, from, from start to finish really. Uh, so with that overview of CMGC, I think we're going to take a quick look at the project schedule with this next graphic. 
Um, so at this point in time, we are pretty early in the design phase and we're working towards a plan set that is about 30% complete by the end of this year. Um, and so as kind of outlined by the following milestone bubbles, we will continue working on plan development over about the next year and a half. And the intent is to have final plans ready for construction in the fall of 2022. Um, so at that point in time, construction will commence, um, but really the bulk of the work is going to be incurring in the um, you know, summer season of 2023. Um, some may work may overflow into 2024, but really again, looking at the bulk of the work occurring in the 2023 construction season. Um, so with that quick overview of where we're at in project development, I'll turn it over to Lisa Fisher with HDR to provide a little bit more information on some of the design stuff we've been working on. Thanks, Beth. We kicked off the design for the project earlier this year by conducting an alternative analysis. <clears throat> and the analysis evaluated five design alternatives focused on different roadway reconstruction options that included shifting the roadway slightly left or right, um, as well as evaluating shoulder widths ranging anywhere from three to six feet. Uh, during this preliminary design development, the team compared the existing roadway curves with MDT's current design standards. And out of the 19 horizontal curves that were located within the project limits, there was one that did not meet the current standards. So we'll show you one of those locations, or that location rather, um, now. And up on the, on the left side, you can kind of see where it is in relation to the entire project, um, kind of more in the middle there. And the curve, um, the intent of the design is to, to modify the curve so it's not such a sharp turn to meet current design standards, which will help improve sight distance for drivers as well. So a preferred alternative was identified through that process and it balances the roadway width with property impacts while providing wider shoulder widths that vary from three to four feet, depending on the location and the site constraints. So as Beth mentioned, the 30% design is currently underway and we will evaluate fill walls along the lakeside when we're widening towards the, towards the water, as well as different slope stabilization treatments along the cut slope or mountainside um, so we can accommodate these wider shoulders. The design also takes into consideration the overall safety of the corridor, cost of the project, and constructability of the highway, which again is a, a benefit for having that CMGC method for this, this project. Um, so this video is one of the unstable cut slopes that are within the project limits. Um, we've seen a lot of uh, movement at this location. Um, TetraTech is leading the geotechnical analysis and design for the project and they've been completing field work along the highway over the past few months. So I'm sure those of you that travel this frequently have probably seen them out there. Um, I know there was a helicopter out there not too long ago. Um, but the improvement options are now being evaluated to reduce the amount of debris that's making its way down the slope and ending up nearer on the roadway. So the proposed highway improvements and additional shoulder widths will also require some private approaches or driveways to be reconstructed as part of the project. Um, the approach design will follow MGT's standards for private approaches where feasible. We will also work with landowners to, along the highway to identify any specific concerns that should be considered during design development. And again, improving the safety along the highway is one of the main goals of the project. So here's another video of a, a private approach, a driveway along the highway. This is to Salmon Cove. Um, the property owners have reached out to the team and we were able to meet with them virtually to discuss the project and better understand their concerns. Um, for example, you can see that the driveway approaches the highway at a less than ideal angle, which makes it really difficult to see oncoming traffic as you're um, accessing the highway. So some design considerations that we'll evaluate here um, include adjusting the layout of the driveway to intersect with the highway at a perpendicular angle and maybe flattening out that vertical grade a little bit to help improve sight distance for traffic that's leaving um, Salmon Cove and entering MT83. This section of Highway 83 experiences a high number of wildlife vehicle collisions. 
A crash analysis was completed for the project and it estimated that just over 26% of all road accidents on Highway 83 involved wildlife, which was mainly white-tailed deer. The project is evaluating methods to reduce these type of collisions in the project area by providing wildlife accommodations. So these um, improvement options could include adding wildlife crossing warning signs along the highway, um, or maybe clear zone widening, which would be the clearing of the vegetation that's adjacent to the roadway to really help drivers see wildlife on or approaching to the highway sooner. Um, another type of wildlife accommodation would be to provide fish passage at the Fish Creek culvert that's located near milepost 7. Um, we did look at other treatment options such as wildlife crossings, wildlife exclusion fencing, um, but that was really considered not feasible for this project. And now on to bicycle traffic. So the current roadway really has little to no shoulders. And as, we, as we've discussed, the proposed improvements for this highway will include additional pavement width for shoulder widening. Um, the new shoulders will vary from three to four feet, again, depending on the adjacent constraints to provide wider shoulders, and that'll help facilitate the bicycle traffic that frequent this area. Um, and now I will actually turn it back over to Lisa Gray and she'll discuss next steps and we'll start taking some questions. Thank you, Lisa, and thank you, team. Um, we hope that you will stay involved. Uh, I've had the opportunity to talk with a number of you on the phone and to email back and forth uh, with your concerns and your questions and comments, and we hope that you'll continue to do that. Uh, MDT and the project team will use the public input from this online meeting and our other meetings to develop and refine the design of the project. And we'll work closely, um, we'll continue to work closely with the community and other stakeholders. Um, in the future, MDT will host another meeting in, during the final design phase of the improvements and you will receive notification as the project moves forward. In fact, um, we'll use the same advertising methods that we use for these meetings. So how you found out about this meeting, you'll be able to find out about the next meeting. Um, then I, it's time for us now to start our question answer session. Um, remember in order to participate in the question answer session, locate the QA button at the bottom of your screen. Um, we've had some folks join us since we went over that, so I'm going to go back up to that screen, if you'll just bear with me. Just bear with me. Okay. Um, So if you will, if you will locate the Q&A button on the bottom of your screen, it's highlighted in blue on this PowerPoint. Um, you click the button and submit your questions. You must send the question using the blue send button or we will be un unable to see it. So we're gonna go ahead and open up our questions and answers. If you have anything for the project team, please let us know. So Lisa, just a couple things that I think we can bring back from questions that were brought up on our previous section that were really, really good questions in my mind. One of them that was brought up several times was, um, are we able to include the intersection um, at the north end with, um, I just drew a blank on the name of the road. Ah. Placid, I believe, Placid Lake Road. Thank, Thank you. you. The, the Lake Placid Road. And this project is going to stop short of that intersection. That intersection has been identified as an intersection where we will be constructing a left turn lane for northbound traffic wanting to go to Lake Placid. But that is, again, outside of this project. 
uh, it's beyond the limits of this project where we made the project split. So uh, just thought I'd throw that out there as a clarification while uh, others are working or people are thinking of other questions. Um, trying to think of other key questions that were brought up from last time. So if any of the team has, has one, um, we can try to remember those as well. We've received a question uh, from Ryan. I have a question about the existing curves on the highway. The curve you identified as having an inadequate radius is not the curve that is my prop that is a problem in my opinion. There are curves further north at the north end of the lake that are pretty tight and more dangerous. Lisa, would you like to take the first crack at that and then perhaps um, Bob if we need? Sure. So we are evaluating all of the curves along the highway and flattening them or um, kind of, you know, reducing that that turn radius, um, if you will, um, to be not as sharp. But we're taking a look at that um, throughout the corridor, you know, throughout the project limits. And so um, there are a few curves, and I think I know exactly where you're talking about, up by, up by the northern end of the project that are um, being flattened slightly. And, and also we're, we're looking at other design standards such as um, super elevation. And so that's really how the, the roadway slopes um, inside or outside as you're traveling through a curve to kind of help you balance through um, those movements. And so all of those types of things are also going to be evaluated and brought up to current standards to help improve the safety of the traveling public. Okay, we have no more questions at this time. Um, one of the questions I thought was interesting this morning that um, maybe Lisa can, Lisa can talk to is discussing the, the width of the road as it currently exists and what it will look like um, when the project is finished. Sure, so the, the current road, um, we have two 12-foot lanes, really limited shoulder width, and so the proposed um, width that we're looking towards is, you know, we'll maintain those two 12 foot lanes and then add in three to four foot shoulders where feasible. And so um, we're really trying to, to identify ways to accommodate those four foot shoulders, but there are some constrained areas that we'll need to neck down and, and see what we can do. Thank you, Lisa. We have another question from Ryan. I also feel the guardrail placement at the approach to the boat ramp is poorly installed and designed. Please consider that most vehicles that leave the day use boat ramp area are pulling a long boat trailer to head south to Missoula. Please consider this when redesigning the new road. Lisa, would you like to speak to that? Yes, thank you for that comment, Ryan. We will definitely take that into consideration moving forward. Um, I think there's a lot of guardrail through this stretch of the highway, and so we're evaluating those kind of on a case-by-case -case basis. Um, and we talked a lot about that, this this morning, but um, once we get through this 30% mark of the design, we'll start looking more and more into the details of things, and that's going to include some of those private approaches, um, including, you know, the, the approach to the state park as well, um, to just see what we can do to improve safety and, and what we can, um, how we can address certain issues similar to that. Um, but that's really, we're really working towards getting that, that um, horizontal and vertical piece of the road identified and, and um, kind of figured out before we get too far in the weeds. Thank you, Lisa. And we have another question from Ryan. The day use boat ramp area fills up nearly every weekend nowadays and people spill out onto the highway creating a very dangerous situation nearly every weekend. Are you considering that the highway is often used as overflow parking? Lisa, would you like to take the first at that? Sure. So um, as we've talked about, you know, we're really focused more on adding the shoulder width just to provide drivers a little bit more room. Um, there are the pullouts that we'll be trying to maintain along the highway uh, throughout the limits of the project. Um, but at this time, you know, we really don't have a lot of room to, to look at, at parking areas. Um, and I'll let Bob maybe speak to that a little bit as well. You bet, Lisa, and, and you've, I, I mean, the biggest challenge with this project is the fact that we're stuck behind, between a mountain on one side and a lake on the other. Um, 
we, we can't intrude into the lake. And if we start trying to cut into the toe of the mountain, we have uh, some monumental challenges with that, trying to figure out how much width we can get. And it becomes just strictly cost prohibitive to, to be uh, cutting any more of the toe of that slope out than what we absolutely need to. So while we recognize a need um, we do have a budget that we're constrained by as well. And that's, that's one of the, the biggest challenges of this project is, is to identify, um, to maximize the safety benefits we can within the budget we have given to us. So, um, you know, the, the, consider, uh, the concerns with the highway being used as overflow parking, this is something that we're dealing with all over in Western Montana. Um, and it's been this past summer was a, even more of a challenge. And in, in the past, I think driven by COVID, people were limited with how much indoor and um, it, it drove people to utilize the, the beauty that is Western Montana, I guess, whether it's the lakes, the streams, the mountains, we, we saw a tremendous influx all over. And so that's a challenge that we're, we're going to do our best to address. But again, uh, we, we do have a, a finite budget that we have to operate within as well. Thank you, Bob. Mike George, I, I'd like you to answer this next one. The question is, during construction, can we expect significant delays and one-way traffic with a pilot car? If so, for how long? Uh, yeah, I, uh, so there, there will be some piloting for sure. So how long um, duration specifications and how long we can have people as far as in queue. As far as distances go, um, ideally we're going to shrink up our work zones and limit the distance that is the, the one way uh, construction just because that'll, that'll grow the queue and have people wait longer. So um, it's still really early, but uh, we will definitely have some one way traffic, some piloting. And then uh, where we can, we'll use some uh, uh, one-way traffic lights to minimize uh, the number of flaggers and pilot cars that are out there. So we'll definitely have a mix of things that'll uh, try to get narrowed down to the most efficient process there. Um, it's just real early right now to be able to tell which one's going to be the key factor. Ryan, uh, thank you, Mike. Ryan, do me a favor. If that didn't come through very clearly for you, would you um, send me a uh, uh, question back saying that you would like us to repeat the answer to the pilot car question? I just wanna make sure you heard enough of it because it broke up a bit for me. Okay, next, um, Lisa, let's, let's have you take the first uh, answer for the question, what is planned for turning north on Woodward, Woodworth Road? Excuse me. So we were able to take um, some traffic counts at Woodworth and the State Park as part of the, the data collection for the project and we're working through kind of the preliminary traffic design right now, um, looking at those particular intersections, State Park and Woodworth, um, to see what, um, if turn lanes are going to be needed or anything like that. Um, I will say as part of that realignment, um, we're really going to try to reduce that, that angle that Woodworth intersects the highway at. And so it's almost going to try to tee into the, to, to the highway a little bit better. Um, so if you are heading north, I think instead of having to look, you know, behind your shoulder and turning around to see oncoming traffic, you'll be able to, to identify um, oncoming cars a little bit easier with the new layout of the intersection. Thank you, Lisa. Okay, the next question is going to require me to recall a little bit of chemistry. So um, I guess, Lisa, you're probably the one who's going to get this one first, and maybe we can have someone from MDT come after you. Currently, there is considerable input, in, input to Salmon Lake of magnesium chloride and other road chemicals. Will consideration be given to reduce these pollutants into the lake with the road design? So actually, Lisa, this is Bob, and I'll Thank take you, that one because uh, they're talking about uh, what we're doing for uh, maintaining our roads in the wintertime. And I can tell you that, uh, again, Western Montana, we have a tremendous number of miles of roads 
next to rivers and streams and, and we're cognizant of that. So it's a constant balancing act of finding the right treatment for the roadway conditions. Um, and, and so one of our one of the things that we're constantly working on is to making sure that we're applying the right material, whether that's sanding or if it's a, a, a salt brine. Um, a lot of our areas we're no longer using mag chloride. We're using a, a different type of material that is uh, it's not a mag chloride. It's something that we're making in house. It's a, it's a salt brine is what we call it. But with the new design, also hopefully we're able to. Uh, improve the slopes. One, one of the things, the cross slope of the roadway, um, you know, the question was brought up earlier, some of these curves uh, are draining um, maybe more directly into the lake than what the, f the future design will. Hopefully we can have some, uh, some opportunities to use natural uh, best management practices to, to screen and drain these materials. So they're going through vegetation before they get to the right into the stream. Uh, so that, that's a commitment that we're using on all of our new designs as well. So we, we recognize the, uh, the concern, we share it. Uh, I will tell you that uh, uh, the vast preponderance of my employees were working with 4MDT living in Western Montana because we recognize the beautiful area we're at and we're, we're very cognizant of trying to do everything we can to uh, work within the environment and protect it. So hope that answers your question. Thank you, John, for your question. And thank you, Bob, for jumping in and answering that. I appreciate it. And um, we have a question from Ryan. At what point, approximate date, will the design be far enough along that if additional right-of-way is needed from cabin owners along Salmon Lake Highway 83, can we expect to be contacted? And Beth, um, oh, I'm sorry, Bob, would you like to take this question? I'll, I'll take an initial stab at it and okay. then others can fill in. Um, the, the first thing to, that I'd like to share is our, our goal here is, is to construct as absolute much of this roadway within the existing right of way that we have and to minimize impacts to, to our neighbors. Um, all the landowners, I, I mean, every approach out there is going to be affected because, and hopefully improved. Uh, so when we get further along into the design, like, like you've heard already today, we're at a, about that 30% design. So we really don't have enough details to bring forward to you of what it's actually going to look like or what we, what we would like to have it look like. So we need to have a little bit more of the design work done before we can have that meaningful detailed conversation. So, um, I guess with that, maybe I'll turn it back to Lisa and maybe Beth to discuss what that time frame will look like when we're going to be getting into those uh, discussions with our adjacent uh, landowners. Sure. So that schedule that Beth had um, kind of walked us through earlier had 60% design in the fall of 2021. And I think that would be kind of a good um, place to start. Um, we'll have some detail of the design um, ready for, for public input. And I think we'll have a little bit better understanding of what those impacts might look like. So I would anticipate, you know, middle to late next year, um, certainly by the beginning of 2022 for sure. I'd just like to add though too, that uh, Ryan, if you are a uh, property owner along there and you have, uh, you know, questions about your approach, um, it would be good for us to uh, reach out to you. Um, so I know, Lisa, uh, you had provided your uh, email contact uh, in the other meeting. Uh, maybe you could do that for Ryan, and we could uh, take a look at uh, his area even before that 60% and at least discuss um, with him his concerns. Of course, Cameron. Thank you very much for bringing that up. Um, this is Lisa Gray. As you know, I'm the public involvement. I am really being tongue-tied today. My apologies. I'm the public involvement lead, and my job is to be a liaison between our community and our stakeholders and the design team. So you can reach out to me, and if I can't answer your question, I know who can answer your question. My email is lisa.com. 
G R A Y at H D R I N C dot com. Again, that's Lisa dot Gray with an A at H D R Inc dot com. And if you didn't get that, just go to the uh, project website and you can find my information there too. But please do feel free to contact us um, at any time if you have questions and concerns that you think of after this meeting. So at this point, I have no more questions in our question answer box. Does anybody have anything that they would like to add to our presentation from the project team? Okay, I'm just, I'm going to close this off from, from my perspective and thank the public. I understand that everybody is quite busy. We appreciate your time. We appreciate your brain power. And we hope that you will stay involved in this project because truly you do make our projects better. Bob, did you want to say something? I just uh -oh. want to uh, thank Oops, I just cut somebody off. Jeff no, I'm quit. sorry. We have a couple more questions. So let's let's do these and I'll and then I'll call you back out. My apologies, Bob. So Ryan says, I'm a cabin owner immediately adjacent to Salmon Lake at the south end. Thank you for the email address. I was able to write it down. Oh, that's very kind. Thank you, Ryan. And Jeff has a question. Will additional turnouts be included in the design? I can take this one. So at this point in time, um, we are not introducing any new turnouts. Um, we'll try to maintain the ones that are out there. Um, there, there might be some shifting slightly um, around just to, to see if we can't accommodate more of that wider roadway through the, through the project limits. But at this point in time, we are not looking at adding any. Thank you, Lisa. Okay, and Henry is asking, at this point, how frequent would temporary road disruptions take place between now and construction? Lisa, would you like to take that one? Sure, I think um, Henry's probably talking about some of the field work that's been going yeah. on. Um, so we've had, you know, helicopters out there, we're doing some test drilling and things like that. And so there's temporary lane closures. Um, we've gotten through the bulk of those for this year, for sure. Um, there might be some follow-up field work that'll happen next summer. Um, there might be some additional surveying that's going on, um, but I don't think it's going to be as frequent as you guys have been seeing it over the last two months because we've really just been um, getting some stuff done and, and getting some information at hand so we can get ready to go on this design. Um, hope, hopefully that answers your questions, but um, it shouldn't be as as busy out there as, as you guys have seen it in the last two months. Thank you, Henry, for that question. And Henry responds, great, thank you. <laughs> okay, any more questions out there? You guys, the, the, you've had great questions. Thank you so much for participating. And Bob, I'm gonna turn it over to you. I will not interrupt you this time. If we get any more questions, we can do them at the end of what you have to say, but please um, close us off, Bob. All right, thanks, Lisa. I, I wanna thank everybody for joining us tonight. Again, uh, great questions, as Lisa had said, that uh, uh, really helps us out. Uh, we rely on the questions from the public to provide us with insights and things that we may overlook or not be aware of. So I encourage everyone to, as Lisa has requested, stay involved. There will be uh, more information coming as we uh, progress with the design on the project. Um, I wanna thank the team for a, a great presentation tonight and for uh, sticking around past, uh, past uh, normal work shift for everybody. Um, and with that, uh, I guess I uh, thanks again, and I hope everybody has a great and safe evening. Okay, thank you. Bye-bye, everybody.